Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a comparison video that has been on my mind for months now since Steve over at Thunderbird Gear first contacted me about this Arno Bernard iMamba. Um, I, you know, it wasn't really a knife that I was super aware of, but he touched base and said, you know, I think this is kind of in your wheelhouse. I'd love to send you one, let you take a look at it. And so uh, I'm really happy that he's been willing to do that because it's a very, very cool knife. Uh, and, and actually all the way back then, when I first saw it, I sort of felt like there's a bit of a CRK vibe here. And you guys agreed, you mentioned that a number of times in my first impressions video and even over on Instagram. So uh, I got a friend, Bradley uh, to lend me his 31. He was happy to do that. By the way, this 31 happens to have come from Steve over at Thunderbird Gear as well. Uh, anyway, I'll put a link to uh, to Thunderbird Gear down in the, the description box. And so I want to take a look at these two knives together and share a little bit of my thought, my, my thought process with you about, you know, which one I would prefer, why, and hopefully this will be helpful to those of you who are looking at this and maybe thinking for yourself, I'd like to spend some money on a knife, which one would be the one that, that I go with. Um, and these are, I think, pretty comparable. They have a similar philosophy of use. I'm not going to get into that too much, but I will when I do my full review on the iMamba, which is coming up here you know, sometime soon. Um, the other thing that I that I actually want to point out is they're reasonably cro close in price point. So the the base price, the carbon fiber inlay version of the iMamba goes for $559 on the Arnold Bernard website. And the, um, in co the 31 here, I don't know why I blanked on the name. The 31 here, though, goes for 550 with the Black Micarta inlay. So pretty close in price. Now, this particular one with Mammoth Tooth is considerably more, but uh, will the fact is, you know, if you kind of pick comparable comparable versions, you can get them for a similar price point. I also know that there will be a plain tie version of this, and we are well aware there's a plain tie version of the 31. So... Uh, you know, I'm not sure how the, the pricing is going to work out on those, but they may be similar as well. And so perhaps this video can be helpful in that regard also. Uh, let's start off with size and weight. I said they have a similar philosophy of use. And, and generally, I think, you know, high-end EDC or sort of EDC plus, you know, EDC that's just a little more capable than perhaps the average, you know, knife that we might throw in our pockets. So the Chris Reeve uh, the Chris Reeve Sabenza 31, we're mostly familiar with the size on this. Many people have seen these knives lots and lots. Overall length is going to be 8 and 3 eighths inches. Blade length, 3 and 9 sixteenths. The handle is 4 and 13 sixteenths. 3 and 7 eighths grip area, so almost 4 inches of grip area, so quite generous, and 4.3 ounces. That's this particular one if you have you know, just the plain tie might be a little bit different. Uh, the iMamba is smaller for sure, but not a whole lot smaller. It comes in at just a hair under eight inches, which is seven and 15 sixteenths, three and seven sixteenths on the blade. So again, it's just a hair under three and a half inches, four and a half inches on the handle, which is quite nice. The efficiency there, the blade to handle ratio is pretty impressive. And finally, three, three and three quarter inch grip area and four ounces. So you can see those numbers are reasonably close to one another. And if I kind of close both of these so you can get an idea of what you're dealing with in pocket. Okay, actually, let's flip these over as well. You can see uh, that's kind of how they're going to ride. You know, your pants are going to land here or here. So uh, not all that different. The Arno Bernard is going to be a little bit smaller in pocket, a little bit lighter, but I doubt most of us could notice that difference. And certainly I'm not going to, you know, in this comparison, I tend, tend to declare winners in different categories. This category, I think we kind of have to pass on because they're just too close to call. All right, let's move on though to the blade where perhaps there's a little more difference, although they're pretty similar as well. On the 31, we're pretty familiar with 31. We have S35VN, uh, three and a half inches of cutting edge, stone wash, hollow grind. This is 22 thousandths behind the edge and basically eighth inch blade stock. It's a little under that, but, but not really worth talking about. All right, over on the iMamba, we have three and three eighths inches of cutting edge, 20 thousandths behind the edge, RWL 34, again, hollow grind, satin finish, um, and oh, 
uh, again, eighth inch blade stock. So very, very similar. And I will say this, the between the two of these, so first of all, I love hollow grinds. So I love the fact that both of these have a hollow grind, makes, makes, makes them both winning blades as far as I'm concerned. Um, in terms of cutting performance, they are so close, you have no idea. Uh, I did cut a couple of things side by side just to see if there was any difference in feel and really it, nothing perceptible, right? Like. <laughs> Uh, and and that, uh, that's probably true about more knives than this, but they are very, very close. Now, I will say that RWL34 is generally considered to be slightly inferior to S35VN. Uh, this is at 59 Rockwell. Uh, CRK, by all accounts, has upped their Rockwell hardness just a little bit, not anything crazy, but I think they're probably around 60 these days. Uh, in terms of experienced performance, all right, when you're cutting with these, all but knife testers are going to notice the difference. Like unless you're going to do the, the Cedric Canada thing and start cutting rope, you're not going to know a difference between these two for if you're just using these as general EDC cutting tools. Now I will say I have a bias here and that is I really, really like satin finished blades. I just love the way the grind lines look. I do, so, you know, l let me just say my bias is toward the satin. However, both of these are really, really good. And again, I, I don't think, you know, we've got a very good uh, plunge grind here. A little bit of a smile here. So in terms of longevity, the, the CRK probably pulls ahead just a little bit. Um, yeah, really, really too close to call anything significant. Uh, there, are, there are some features I like more on the iMamba. There are some features I like more on the 31. Again, I feel like I, I can't, they're too close to call. All right, let's move on to the action. That'll be a little easier to deal with. I, I know you guys are going to be getting frustrated about this time because I keep sort of waffling on uh, making any solid decision. But these knives really, really are very close together in terms of look and feel and performance and, and all of that stuff. So uh, obviously 31 is going to be large phosphor bronze washers, nice big pivot stop, uh, pivot screw, as well as blade stop. Uh, I love the action on the Savenza. Uh, again, in terms of how it functions, you've got that nice ceramic ball uh, that uh, interfaces with the blade tang as well as serves as the detent ball. So that's really, really great. Uh, and of course, the very well-known Chris Reeve Knives thumb stud, which is fine, but has commonly been uh, identified as not the most comfortable thumb stud in the knife world and for some reason Chris Reeve just doesn't change it and I kind of wish they would tweak it just a little bit. Moving over to the iMamba, no thumb studs here, it's obviously a flipper on bearings, I think probably many of you watching this will be familiar with that anyway. More traditional take on the lock bar with a stainless steel lock bar insert that also serves as an over travel stop and more traditional approach to the pivot as well with bearings and a more normal sized hold on there you go more normal sized stop pin now i do want to comment on this at this point and say that oh there's one other point i should talk about uh, in terms of uh, functionality here uh, the action this great Fuller-ish nail nick thing uh, on the iMamba is fantastic. I really, really like that feature because it allows me to uh, either spidey flick the knife, which is great, uh, or to thumb open the knife, which, you know, I just, that extra opening feature is nice to have. Is it necessary? And if I'm just opening the knife up to cut something, does it matter? No. Um, in terms of satisfaction and user enjoyment, uh, are both of them pretty darn good? Yeah, the smoothness and the precision of the 31 is highly enjoyable. I will say the the um, iMamba does pull ahead in terms of speed and, fun and, and flickability. You know, if you're going to be fidgeting with your knife on the couch, you're going to want the iMamba. The other thing that I have to give it credit for is, and this is a favorite feature, uh, is the way that they've done this uh, this fuller here that allows me to spidey flick or open the knife. Um, on the other hand, the disappointing side of this, maybe the less seller side is, you know, it's a very vanilla approach. I would have liked to see roller bearings or dual row ceramic or, or 
you know, a special detent system or just something a little bit unique, right? There are like a million and one flippers out there that are bearings with a flipper tab, decent detent, and the stainless steel lock bar insert. That's like, I've said that those three things or four things over and over and over again in like a hundred thousand knife reviews. Um, so well, the the Sebenza has some special unique things that I can talk about. There's not much special or unique unique going on with the iMamba other than that really really cool uh, sort of fuller slash nail nick uh, option that they have there. Okay, so which one is better? You know, I think most people are going to agree that the modern approach with the flipper or uh, with the flipper and bearings and the option of flicking your knife open is going to be superior. It's a little faster. It's a little more comfortable. So I've got to give that to the iMamba. In terms of the handle, we're kind of back to where we've been all along. They they both do such a great job. Of course, both are highly attractive. Now, that's a little bit subjective. You may look at one of these and go, no, nope, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I would never buy one. Or you may look at one and go, that's fantastic, and it's just the greatest thing since sliced bread. So if that's you, then obviously buy the one that really, really attracts you. Otherwise, uh, I find both of these very, very nice looking. The fit and finish is very, very good. Uh, and the ergonomics, they're close. All right, I will say this. If you have hands that are much bigger than mine, I would probably lean toward the 31. There is a little more space there. And the 31, uh, you know, both of them fit fine in my hands. But I, again, I could imagine someone who says there's just not quite enough uh, real estate on the iMamba. Uh, but that would be, you know, there'd be a limited number of people, I think, who would be in that predicament. So hard to, again, hard to make a solid distinction on the handle. You know, I, I guess the one thing I will say that uh, the iMamba does is I like the sort of dressed up pivot and I like the mill titanium clip. When you're spending that kind of money, this is what I want to see. The bent clip, yes, it works and that's fine, but it's nice to see something a little dressier, uh, more in keeping with the, the flavor of the knife. Uh, and so just some, some you know, points where it's kind of flashed up a little, uh, I do find that very appealing on the iMamba. Declare a winner in this particular category, again, I guess the only, I will say, I think the 31 does stand out in one significant area, and that is there are very few knives that are going to be as disassemblable as anything from Chris Reeve, right? This, if you would, you take this apart to clean it, it's easy. It comes apart well. Everything goes back together well. Very, very nicely done and really, really easy for the end user. Uh, the bearings here, uh, they're loose fitting bearings and you don't want to take this knife apart, okay? So that, I've got to give some extra points to the 31 in that particular, uh, on that particular point. All right, overall, I don't own either of these. So keep in mind that I, you know, my usual take is if I had to get rid of one, but the fact is I'm getting rid of both of these. I'm not keeping either one. Uh, if I had to pick only one and spend my money on right now as it stands, I would pick the iMamba because I already have an Inkosi that I love. And, and this is my CRK. I don't need any others. All right, if I didn't have this, and I was looking at these two, it would be a much, much more difficult question. And I honestly don't know which one I would pick. There are certainly features on the 31 that appeal to me from a, from a longevity standpoint and from an ease of use standpoint. There are also pick features on the iMamba that appeal to me. They're just different features. You know, I like the construction. I like the overbuilt. I like the, the design that's really meant to last forever on the iMamba. I love the blade shape. I love the nail nick. I love the way they've done the inlays, the pivot screw. There's, there's some decorative stuff that I, I, I am more drawn to here. So I like them both for, for different reasons. And in terms of making a final decision, as I said, I would, in my current status, I would take the iMamba because I don't need another Chris Reeve. If I didn't have either one, I honestly don't know which one I would pick, guys. I hope that I've given you enough information to figure out which one you would pick. We'll talk to you soon.